thank you for being here. It's such a gorgeous day. You look at the weather, it was a hard choice. And I can't tell you how much it means to come here. <laughs> talk about opera, talk about musical theater. There's nothing like live stage performance. And that's one of the most challenging endeavors there is, is putting on live performances, costume, lights, wonderful artists. That's really uh, such an important endeavor, and I'm so glad we can talk about that today. This company is so exciting, uh, built by Volmar and Corson with love over many, many years. And uh, what was the first, what was the founder? Was it 1995? Uh, 95. Mm -hmm. Incredible accomplishments. So many companies have risen and fallen. And um, it's really a tribute to the love that Bill, Bill and Lauren put into this that it survives and it thrives today. Uh, I'm very proud to be here. Um, I, before coming here as executive director, I was a guest conductor and I got to see the culture of the company and really get to know people. And it was so exciting to see a company with such a positive momentum that was really looking to build exciting things. Um, even before I came on board, we were performing in this beautiful church. We do a lot of our staging in this very room. It's really an amazing connection to have with this church. It's so beautiful. And, um, and now we've got it. We're, we're going to be performing our next concerts, our next performances, at Fellowship Cultural Arts Center, which is a brand new state-of-the-art theater, intimate and gorgeous. You've got, every seat is gorgeous. Every seat is perfect. It's going to be really something special. Now we're about to announce that we're going to do our light night gala on October 29th in that location. We're really excited about the artists we're going to feature. It's a little bit of everything, and uh, one of my great privileges in my career is starting in New Jersey. I conducted community theater. I was a high school teacher. I conducted community theater. I actually worked with some really wonderful tenors at Bill Corson in my travels. We were one of my first operas together. And, um, and I, I founded um, my, my love of opera there, working with people, building organizations. And um, started at a church based in the Minute Summit, and uh, it's taken me to some incredible places. I've been to Europe many times, I've conducted on in Italy, I've conducted throughout the United States, and now it's a privilege to come back home where I started my musical training and to work with a company that's really exciting, really exciting. And um, for Light Night, I'm thrilled to announce some of the singers. We haven't announced this yet, you're the first to hear this. Um, one of them is going to be Ronald Rinaldi, who's been at the Metropolitan Opera for 30 years. He, is, um, he was also the voice of the Olive Garden on their whole commercial campaigns in the past, and uh, has also done, he's uh, one of those people, he's somewhere 350 roles in the Metropolitan Opera. He's, um, uh, Mike Spasolipini, who was my mentor and someone I trained, he called him a master of the Italian lead style, which he didn't say about anyone. He was trying to for all these pianists. That just goes to show you the care that was given to this man. Anyway. You're going to love Ronald Nolte. He's a gentleman. He's also thrilled about singing some Broadway, which no one ever hears, but he loves singing Broadway too. <laughs> so, what I love about Light Up New Jersey, it is opera, it is operetta, and musical theater. And the three are related so closely. Operetta comes from opera, musical theater comes from operetta. So, we have this whole lineage of stage productions, and I can't wait to share some excitement with you. So, our Light Night Gala, we're also going to feature a homegrown talent who's been here many times, Chelsea Friedlander, who sang in this company at age 15. Mm -hmm. And since then has been the doll at, uh, in uh, Offenbach's Conte Hoffmann, and she just sang the doll at Nashville Opera, and she also sang the Light Opera of the Jersey's at Dell and Flater House, as well as many things. So she's going to be returning, so coming back home. We're also going to have one of America's leading baritones, Sushan Kim, who is uh, sung with Dallas Opera, and he's also sung with many companies in New York City, Carnegie Hall. He'll be one of our featured artists as well. So it's going to be a really exciting night. I hope you can join us on Light Night. I've got some information over here if you'd like one of the letters. I'd love to get those out to you. Hope you can be there. It's very exciting. And we're also going to talk about our first fully staged production, Returning to the Stage After COVID. What is more exciting than that? La Boheme by Puccini, the greatest of all great operas. It's one of the greatest operas. It's beautiful. Um, for this production, we're going to have it at fellowships at the Cultural Arts Center. And it's going to feature a director who is um, a real star in the opera world, Andrea Del Giudice, who is one of my dearest friends. Um, she sang Madama Butterfly all over the world, including uh, Rome opera. She sang Bremen opera. She sang all over the planet. She was Miss Madama Butterfly. She's become a wonderful director as well. And she has a vision of her directing. And she's been directing operas in Italy, in the United States. And we've worked on three or four together. They always have a modern spin. 
and she loves to tell the opera from the female point of view. So it's going to be a modern setting with projected images. So it's going to look something like a movie. It's going to be projected scenery. It's going to be something really interesting. I'm not, I'm not going to give too much away. <laughs> Picture like a subway car running past while you're watching. You know, we're trying out some really new technology. The goal being that opera is current and alive. It's not a museum piece that you put on a shelf and you know, something you can take off the shelf. It's something that we take it, every generation adds something new to opera. That's what makes it so special. So we're going to add a little bit of technology, a little bit of modern interpretation to one of the greatest works. And that's what makes these works so enduring and powerful, is that the universal themes apply to every generation. That's when Puccini wrote it in the 1890s, it's still as relevant today as it was. So the same with Mozart, when Mozart wrote his operas back in the day, they're still the same, because humanity is still the same. So I can't wait to explore these pieces with you. Um, it's, I know it's a very intimate gathering today, but we're also recording this so people can watch this after the fact. So I want to thank you all for being here, and I think we have an exciting story to tell. I'm going to introduce you to some people here as you're talking. Uh, we have Laura Farmer, who's a, a new Board of Trustees member, and a fabulous soprano, too. Oh, all right. <laughs> we have Chris. Sarah who's our production, president of our production board, and all around great person. We have Bill Force, of course, the founder, and uh, all around, most important guy, we're going to talk to Bill. And we also have... Tom's here. Tom Dolan, that's right. <laughs> so, thank you so much. I'm going to be answering questions. I can't wait to talk to you about opera. Opera is my, is my first love. I love conducting a lot of things. Usually I see, when I see people like this, I'm going to ask you to open up your violin cases or you know, take out some music and have a rehearsal, but uh, I won't do that today. But we're really onto something special here. This company has worked very hard to build a good foundation, and we're going to work on that together. So thank you so much, and I look forward to talking with you. Well, that's of course. Oh, I've done the same stuff. Well, thanks, Jason, very much for taking you over, over here. Yeah, well, I'm going to take <laughs> So this is off the cuff because I wasn't asked to speak. But I like to talk in front of people, so what do you think? No, um, it's, it's a great privilege for us to have Jason. Um, Laura and my wife and I have worked at the company since the beginning. We started this room right here. We put a little stage over there, and we're doing a funder, fundraiser for St. Mark's Church, where we are now. And it started off very uh, small. Oh, let's do a little concert kind of thing, you know. And, Lauren and I met doing Gilbert and Sullivan in New York City in the late 80s or early 80s. And um, we, uh, she knew a little bit of opera and I knew a little bit of theater. And so we kind of think, well, we just operetta, let's just do a concert. We have little highlights from the Flater Mouse, little highlights from Brigadoon, these kind of things. And so we put the show together. We called it uh, the September Song because September Song was in September, right? So that's what we did. And we put that together in this room. And when I started struggling, I was like, you know, you need some lights in here. Mm -hmm. some theater lights in here. Oh, that'd be a good idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some costumes, you know, Mikado, let's get some kimonos, you know, put some kimonos on. That'd be kind of interesting to do that. And suddenly I was saying, when you go here in the days, I directed a little bit in college, but I didn't really know that I was directing. Mm -hmm. I said, well, okay, uh, we'll better if we can. And suddenly I'm directing this show. Costumes, scenery, not too much scenery. Lights, we had curtains back here eventually, and some backdrops and things eventually. We did that, it was 1995, it's a long time ago now. So it was a great, great thing for us to be doing, and it grew and grew into 26 years, Tom? It was 26 years we did September Song all together. But the process, my wife goes, well, you know, we should do some other shows too. How about an opera highlights mm -hmm. program? And I said, okay. So we created something called Operageous. Operageous was highlights of everything from Richard Strauss to all the Mozart operas and like that. And we did that sometimes in, uh, in Madison, sometimes here too. And then we're fortunate also to have the opportunity to perform over here in Pleasant Valley Park under the guise of the Bernard's Township, also known as Bastogary, Bernard's Township uh, Parks and Recreation Department. They provided a fund for us to perform shows there. And we did uh, Mikado, Pirates of Penzance, HMS Pinafore, uh, the musical theater Footloose, and we also did Thoroughly Modern Building, which was a great uh, opportunity to do some modern stuff with us there too. So we've grown, we've grown, and we're actually kind of retired now. Uh, Heath got me on the trustees, and Lauren's the trustees, so we're not going completely away, but we got Jason, that's the base in the whole. He's going to take over doing the executive director part of this company, and I can't tell you how excited and proud we are to have Jason. 
But uh, Bill's done such a great job of, you know, and there's so much love, and that's really what I, I respect. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much.